Hi everyone, Michael here, Vegan Space Scientist. Welcome back to the channel. So just recently, I was very happy to uh, have received the news that I have completed my PhD. I submitted my thesis in about January this year, or resubmitted, I should say, uh, after reviewing some changes that the reviewers wanted me to do. Uh, and just uh, got news about a month, a bit over a month ago that my thesis has been finally accepted and approved by uh, the university. So that's done. I'm very happy for that to be done. Uh, and I thought it would be a good opportunity to do a bit of a video series about my experience doing a PhD. Uh, so first video, which we're doing today, is going to be about, uh, I guess, why I didn't like doing a PhD overall and why I wouldn't do one again. And I kind of regret it and recommend people not to do a PhD generally now. Uh, so we'll get into that in a sec. The second video, which we'll do later, is going to be uh, about some of the things that I learned as part of my PhD. So not specifically the science, but I guess um, you could see it as if you are going to do a PhD, here's the things that you should probably know, or here's here's some <laughs> things that I've learned or wish I did differently. Uh, and then the last video will be more specifically about my research. So summarizing the research I did, which was looking at um, different seismic or different um, exploration techniques to uh, map and explore off Earth bodies like Moon, Mars, asteroids, comets, uh, for the purpose of asteroid deflection, for mining and colonization. So uh, we'll, do, we'll do that video um, at the end of the series. So as I said, today is going to be about why I didn't enjoy doing a PhD. But just first, I want to say uh, I'm trying something a little bit different uh, with these videos. So uh, if you feel like uh, you enjoy my work and you want to support it, there will be a bit of a plug at the end of this video about how you can do that. Uh, so for now, let's get into why I wish I didn't do a PhD. So, okay. Uh, first, one thing I want to make very, very clear is I don't blame uh, the university. I don't blame my supervisors. I, I really, um, and I can say this quite honestly, there's no one, no in, like, particular person that I, that I blame or think uh, was contributing to making this a bad experience for me. Uh, I very much blame kind of the system of PhDs and how they work and academia in general. Uh, so I just want to make that very clear because my supervisors and everyone at the university was just amazing and they, I mean, they went so above and beyond to help me get this done. Uh, so yeah, they were very, very understanding. Um, but look, I, I had depression pretty bad throughout my PhD. Um, in particular, uh, there was one point when I was in the United States that it just, everything kind of fell apart and I'll talk about that in a sec. Uh, yeah, so one thing that I actually knew going into a PhD is uh, the correlation between PhD students and rates of depression and anxiety is really, really high compared to the average population. So PhD students, 40% um, of them experience uh, depression or anxiety, uh, which is in contrast to 32% of people who experience depression and 26% of people who experience anxiety. Uh, so somewhat higher than normal. Now, it's hard to say whether that's any causation uh, does, do, does doing a PhD actually cause depression and anxiety? Or is it just the case that depressed and anxious people like doing PhDs? It's honestly hard to say. Um, but either way, I mean, in a sense, in one sense, it doesn't matter because if you do a PhD, you know that you have a high correlation, uh, likely, with depression and anxiety. So that's good for someone to know when they're going into a PhD. And I knew that, um, and I thought I was prepared for that. Uh, yeah, it's it's not something you can really prepare for, I guess, very easily. Um, I mean, I I have had depression and anxiety for somewhat longer uh, for different reasons, but um, that's something I've sort of battled with for the last 10 or so years, uh, actually a bit more now. So yeah, I knew that going in, but still it was overall a very hard experience. One of the main things I don't like about PhDs is something I don't like about academia in general, which is it's the way that research is incentivized and... Um, that research gets done. So there's this notion of publish or perish in academia, uh, which is where you have to publish um, papers in high quality journals uh, in order to pr progress your academic career. And you're very much pushed to, to do this through various incentives like promotions and getting research grants and that kind of thing. What that means is, I mean, there's different journals with different um, impact ratings. There's different ways of measuring their impact, but it's basically something like, uh, how many citations do papers in this journal get? So everyone wants to publish their papers to the most prestigious journals. And the reason for that is universities then get to say, we, you know, if, they, if their research in engineering is 
often going to very high quality journals, they get to say we're the number one engineering university, research university in the world. And then all the young engineering undergrad students want to go do their undergraduate engineering degrees there. So there's a financial incentive for this. So the, the, that eventually filters down through to the researchers um, who they're incentivized to pu publish, you know, to, to get things published in those journals. And the way they do that is they want to publish. It's You're not incentivized to publish research that's uh, really actually impactful and useful to humanity or to life. That's kind of secondary. I mean, the way that the, the real metric that you're optimizing for is how many citations you get in high quality journals. So you're incentivized to publish interesting things, things like null results. So let's say you do some research and it didn't quite work. The theory that you were excited about, you know, didn't work in the end the, or the evidence didn't support that. Um, or you're testing some new technique and it just doesn't work. There's a disincentive to publish those things. So those, negative, getting ne null results in uh, publishing research is a lot harder, or at least you'll probably not be able to get it published in such a high quality journal. Um, but I think that stuff is real, still really important to share. And yeah, I mean, overall, it's just, uh, it's, it's, if you're interested in doing research that is really impactful and actually has a, uh, you know, tangible benefit on, on the lives of others, doing a PhD is probably, or academia in general is probably not the way to go. Um, you might get lucky and be able to do some research in that field. But I think if you go and work for a nonprofit or government, I think you're more likely to be able to um, do that kind of research. Certainly people who do, who are in academia, there's a bit more prestige, there's a bit more trust associated. Uh, I mean, I, I have to tell you that people, the, sometimes people think I'm smarter just about like um, things completely unrelated to anything I know about or anything I'm doing in my PhD just because I'm doing a PhD. And I guess that's a benefit, but it's also kind of frustrating uh, when people think I'm just naturally smart about everything when, you know, I'm, I'm kind of an expert in like a very, very specific small thing. Yeah, I guess I'm pretty cynical uh, of the system of academia and doing a PhD. I'll try and talk a little bit about my experience and I guess how that led to me coming a bit undone when I was in the United States. So early in my PhD, I managed to secure a student exchange, so to speak, or an internship at the Jet Propulsion Laboratory in the United States, um, which is part of NASA. So my co-supervisor uh, worked there, so I was able to um, go into that. It was a huge opportunity, a uh, bit of pressure on me, you know, from the university. Um, not, not um, I guess, intentionally, perhaps, but, uh, you know, I felt pressure that I was the first person to go do this, like, prestigious internship. I have to, I have to really do well. So I went there, and I did my lab experiments, and we set up this new methodology to test the velocity of seismic uh, waves in like off earth regoliths. So we had like a fake Mars soil and a fake lunar soil that we're testing. We tested in a vacuum chamber and it kind of like the experience I realized just like weren't really working that well. Uh, we, you know, I came up with this new methodology and I was all excited about it and then it just didn't really work that well. Um, and the results didn't really make sense. And I thought I'd done something wrong and I sort of panicked a little bit. And I kind of just went a little bit off the grid and yeah, it was like a really bad, like second half of that year was like pretty, pretty bad for me. Um, so yeah, I mean uh, that, yeah, that like affected the quality of my PhD overall, um, certainly set me back a little bit. Um, so yeah, I mean, w one hard part about doing a PhD is you become kind of one of the world leading experts on like a very, very niche thing. And no one really knows about that thing. So, I mean, I can give you an example. If you were to say, oh, if you were to ask your supervisor, um, oh, I don't know why this experiment isn't working. Why isn't it working? And they might say something like, well, you tell me you're the world expert. So it's hard. It's really hard. Like doing these experiments and them not working and you just don't know, like, am I not understanding what's happening? Have I just fucked up? Uh, yeah, it's, it's tricky. So... That's definitely something to be aware of, the fact that there are some support structures, but really no one knows what's going on and you just kind of have to work it out. And that's hard. Um, I mean, you know, coming from someone who, uh, before that I worked in industry doing seismic exploration and the stuff you're doing there is like less experimental. Uh, people, there's, there's experts that like kind of that know what they're doing so you can ask them. So yeah, it was kind of a rude shock to go from that into doing um, doing a PhD. So yeah, overall, um, I feel like if I knew what I knew now, 
I would have done something different. I might have gone and worked for a nonprofit or something to do research because don't get me wrong, I love research. I just don't think a PhD was right for me. Um, so I'm glad it's done, but you know, I think sometimes people, when they do something really hard, it's done, they sort of forget the pain that they felt throughout it. And they sort of uh, think, oh, well, it was worth it. And I'm kind, of, I'm kind of fighting against that a little bit. I, I want to really remind myself that it was really, really, really freaking hard. Um, and I don't think overall it was worth it. I mean, that's yet to be determined. You know, maybe maybe doing a PhD will like make a huge difference in my life, uh, in my career. Like it'll just, you know, be a huge benefit. Um, I'm not convinced. So, you know, open-minded about that. But I think overall probably wasn't worth it. So I probably wouldn't recommend people to do a PhD, generally speaking. Um, I'll talk a bit more about this in, in my second video in this series, which will be about uh, if you are going to do a PhD, how do you make sure um, you do it you do it right? But uh, yeah, overall, I, I would recommend people against doing a PhD. So two, two things I say, um, and this is these are two pieces of advice I got before I started my PhD, which I, which I followed. So one is make sure you have a good project. If you're doing a PhD, just do a PhD and you don't have a really good project that you know, you're passionate about and you think you will do well at, then you're wasting your time. You, you're you going to crash and burn, most likely. Uh, so don't do a PhD for the sake of doing a PhD. So I had that. I had my project in space science and I was interested in reducing like human extinction risk. Uh, and the second part is make sure you have a really good supervisor. And, you know, you can have a great project and a terrible supervisor and, um, yeah, they're, you're going to fail. So I had an amazing supervisor uh, who I was in touch with for some time before I started the PhD. So I had both of those things and I still kind of crash and burn. So it's not enough to just have that. I guess you have to really make sure is a PhD actually right for you. And I don't really know the best way to work that out. So I didn't do a master's. I mean, I did an undergrad honors thesis, which was over about a year. So then a master's, you know, if you do it by research, maybe that's two years doing a thesis. Maybe that's a bit more of a a better picture of gives you a better picture of is a PhD right for you. So I didn't do that. Um, I didn't have to with my university. Most universities in Australia, you don't have to do a master's. But may, I'm thinking maybe if I did the master's by research, would that give given me a better idea of whether a PhD was right for me? Yeah, maybe, maybe. Um, I don't know. It's um, yeah. It's it's uh, I. I, one thing I can say for sure is I, I wouldn't do it again. I don't really know what I would have done in hindsight, though, to um, to work out that I shouldn't have done one. Um, yeah, I don't know. I mean, I'm a big believer in trying lots of things and to see what works and making sure you, like, do do something, like getting an internship, say, in an industry before you go and work in that industry to see if it's right for you before, like, committing to a full-time job. Um, so I don't know if there's a way to do that neatly for a PhD other than say like do a master's, which maybe I should have done. But in the end, it took me six years to do my PhD. It's typically three and a half years in Australia. Uh, it took me longer because for the first, I think half, first half of the first year I was part-time. Uh, and then obviously my issues in the US. And then I took about six months off to um, to support the Animal Justice Party and to run in a few elections and to, to work on that for six months and just to have a break. I submitted initially December, 2020. Uh, and then I got my feedback a few months later from the supervisors. Um, and I kind of worked on like this new chapter they wanted me to do. I mean, I, I did procrastinate a bit on that, but it's partly because I didn't really know what I was doing again, but like it really, really didn't know what I was doing with computer modeling. They wanted me to do a new chapter on computer modeling. Um, so yeah, that, that took the, like the better part, better part of a year finalizing that and then getting that into, you know, re editing the thesis and so on and resubmitting. Uh, and then I did that by January this year and 2022 uh, and finally was accepted in March. So yeah, it was a long process. Uh, it was much longer for me than, than it usually would be. Yeah, overall, overall, I can pretty comfortably say that I wouldn't do it again if I had the choice. Uh, definitely not staying in academia. Um, now, of course, I'm uh, working with a nonprofit, the Sentience Institute, um, which is an effective altruism organization um, think tank working on social, um, social change and technological change research. Uh, with a view to expand humanity's moral so humanity's moral circle. I'm really enjoying that. And, uh, you know, that's a bit of research and a bit of some other stuff. So yeah, that's, that's really good. Again, I, I love research, but, uh, just, I think a PhD in academia was not right for me. So, um, that's what I have now, as I did say, uh, at the end of this video, I would be doing just a bit of a plug. Um, if you're still here on how you can support, um, these videos. So I'm trying something a bit different. Uh, I've subscribed for a service called, um, buy me a coffee. 
where you can um, click the link below and that will take you to my page where you can, uh, it's just it's for once up donations, it's a bit like Patreon, but they take less fees uh, on Buy Me A Coffee. So you can uh, like make a $1 donation if you enjoy my video and if you want to encourage me to make more. Um, so completely leave that up to you. But if you did enjoy it, then um, at the very least, please like and subscribe to the video and leave a comment, especially if you're thinking about doing a PhD or if you, you know, you've done a PhD, what's your, what's, what has your experience been? That would be useful to add to this conversation to get in the comments. Um, but yeah, overall, uh, thank you so much for watching and I hope you have a great day and see you next time.